everyone that's here this morning, all our regular folks, my visitors, amen, glad you're here. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Judges, Judges chapter number 2. And we'll get there in just a few moments. Judges chapter number 2. Before we read, let me ask you a couple questions. You know me, I like, I like us to uh, uh, make sure that we are together as we are ministering the Word of God. I like to pull you into the Word of God. Before we break open the Scripture, let me ask you this question. How many out there have found that, that sometimes you can have some pretty intense feelings about things in life? I think that we can all say that we are, we all have feelings, and, and, and our feelings are important. We can't be driven by them. Uh, you know, uh, God made us emotional. Uh, but, 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 but I believe that with that being said, there are times in my life, and I believe if you'll be honest with yourself when you reflect, there are times in my life where my feelings can be wrong. My feelings can be wrong. And, uh, uh, but what is truth is the Word of God. The Word of God says that it is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Do you remember that Isaac was fooled into thinking that, that, that Esau uh, 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 was in front of him? Uh, and when all the while, it, 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 it wasn't. He, he felt Esau's arm and said, he says, it feels like Esau, but the voice, the voice, it sounds like Jacob. I, I need to tell you that we cannot trust what we feel as much as what we can trust what we hear from the Word of God. Amen. We, we are, our feelings will lead us wrong. Amen. And if we give in to them, we have to say, wait a second. I don't want what I feel, but I want the voice. Amen. The voice is as loud and clear. Amen. Coming from the throne room of heaven. Amen. You just can't trust your feelings, but you can trust the voice. The voice that God speaks down deep to the depth of the inner man. Amen. So I, I believe this morning that I have a word for all of us. Amen. That God wants to speak deep His voice to the inner man. No matter what you're feeling this morning, amen, it can feel very strong one way and it can be persuasive in the way that it feels. But the truth of what God says is what's important. So I want us to look and to see that there was a dangerous generation that was about to happen as we're about to break open the Word of God. That they were going about their feelings instead of hearing from God. So in, in Judges chapter number 2, verse number 7, the Word of God says, And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord uh, that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Tim, uh, Neth Harris, in the Mount of Ephraim on the north side of Gaash. And also all the generations were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord. Neither the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. And they forsook the Lord and their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods and the gods of the people, uh, uh, of the gods of the people who were around about them and, and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord's anger. Amen. Here it is that we look and uh, you will find that in our culture that there are trends. Trends that happen on, on many, many levels. Uh, uh, if you look, there are styles that are trends. When well, you may look back at your high school picture and you may cringe because hot hairstyles have changed, clothing styles have changed. 
uh, 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 you know, what, what, what happens in one generation really changes in the next generation. You know, those trends that, 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 that happen. And so there are styles. Uh, you know, bell bottoms aren't style anymore. At least I don't think they are. Uh, uh, maybe I could be uh, wrong. Uh, uh, music can change. Uh, uh, there can be economic trends and styles, things that can happen. And so uh, as we look, uh, the different generations can hold a different ideologies. We see that. We see that. You live long enough, you'll see that, 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 that it kind of changes. But, but I need to tell you that, that, that from God's perspective and the people of God, their view and their confidence in God never changes. Amen. It's not a trend. Amen. It's not just an opinion of viewpoint. Amen. Uh, but uh, but I'm, I'm fearful that, that, that particularly maybe in this generation, but also peppered throughout all the generations that are alive today, I believe that, that we suffer from, from the idea of giving all to Jesus isn't so much what this generation thinks as much as why is so much expected from me, from God? But God hasn't changed. And I'm fearful if we allow trends to take over who we are as believers, it will hurt the next generation should God tear it. I want you to think about what I'm saying today. I want you to gently apply it to your life of my belief. What happens after Joshua dies? What happens after Joshua dies? Uh, let's look at Joshua for, 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 for a moment. Joshua knew God. Uh, he knew God intimately. Uh, yet I, I understand that it was Moses who spent 40 days at the top of the mountain uh, but, and that experience. But if you look at Scripture, you'll find that, 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 that Joshua was there also. Amen. Uh, you'll find that Joshua had a hunger for, for God. And, and, and this young Joshua, uh, there was something about probably around the age of 20 years old when we find him coming on the scene. So we find him being kind of uh, 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 hooked up with Moses there. And so Joshua, he, uh, he, he, he went with Moses to the top of the mountain. Uh, if you look at the Word of God there in Exodus 24, you'll find that there were elders and there was uh, Abinadab, there was uh, 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 Nadab, Abihu, I'm sorry. There was Aaron, uh, Nadab, uh, Abihu, 70 others who went with God, uh, Moses. But, but when he started climbing the mountain, they weren't allowed to go the rest of the way. But if you look, Moses goes, and so does Joshua. So here is a man that, that when we look at his life, the spirit of Joshua, he was not invited, but he was permitted. I want more of God. Amen. I, I, I'm going to go. Even if I don't necessarily feel the invitation, I'm going to seek God's face. Amen. I want you to know that maybe some folks will say, well, we don't live in the days of great revivals and great things. But I, you may say, I, I, I don't have that invitation. But yet you are permitted to go if you go. God is looking for men and women who will climb the mountain, who will see the glory of God, who will go all the way to sense the presence and the power of God. And so here it is that, 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 that when they come down off the mountain, that, that, that Joshua, he hears uh, this, this, this thunder rolling, and, and he thinks there's war or something going on. But all the time, Moses knows that there's been a golden calf that has been built, and there's worship to a false god. And so uh, although Joshua experienced things, Moses interpreted them and, and, and perceived their importance. And so we, we find that, that afterwards that, that, that uh, Moses builds what is called a, a tabernacle. I find it interesting because Moffat, if you look at Moffat's uh, Bible, it calls this a trysting place. Uh, that word trysting means this. It's a place where lovers meet. It's a place where, where, where lovers come and connect. And there there are promises and truths that are shared with one another. Can I tell you that we need a place where we fall in love with God and we come with God and we hear His voice. He speaks to us. He gives us His promises. And we leave because of this love relationship. And we carry out the work of God because we're so in love with God. You know, we can talk it. We can say very good that I love God. We can act it. But do we really have that time spent with Him where we truly love God and spend time in that trusting place? That place where, where those who are in love go and meet. God help us. 
You see, Joshua's life was so neat. He saw the Red Sea part. He, 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 he was, when, when, when Aaron and her were holding up the hands of Moses, there he was in the valley, and he was fighting the battle, and he saw what God was doing in their midst. I mean, he experienced God, and, and Joshua saw God perform great feats, and, and when, when, when the Moses generation died, Joshua, he encountered the angel Michael, and Joshua led Israel to their inheritance, and Joshua saw giants fall, and Joshua saw uh, the great wall. And all of these things Joshua saw Caleb conquer his mountain at 85 years of age. And so here is Joshua. All these things were given to him by prior generations. They built altars and subdued kingdoms. They fought giants and they held on to faith. He saw that things weren't done through carnal weaponry, but they were done in the spirit. See, if we're going to do something for God, it's not going to be by our exploits alone. It's not going to be what we do by our hand, but it's going to be what we do in the Spirit. God, help us that we pray, that we fast, that we praise God, that we claim the promises of God, that, that, we, that, that we plead the blood of the Lamb, that we will not be denied. Amen. That's what generations prior to us has done. And so I'm concerned this morning, where are we at as, as a church? Where are we at a place where we know the power of God, where we experience it? And what are we leaving to our next generation? I saw an illustration this week that was interesting. It was this great big uh, uh, container, Brother Josh, higher than me, wider than me, and it was filled with uh, 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 orange ping pong balls. And then there was a little, there was a little fish bowl beside of it that was filled with ping pong balls. And it said this: it said the large, the large part uh, of the ping pong balls that you see are all the days of the year. And, uh, and then in the small fishbowl, these are the Sundays of the year. It is your responsibility to teach your children about Christ far more than leaving it up to the church alone. We have a responsibility to experience the presence and the power of God and then to instill it into this next generation because it's greater than just a Sunday morning of worship service. We need God in our life every day of our lives. Amen. God help us. What happens when the Joshua generation is gone? And so, that trysting place, that place of love and fellowship and knowing the, 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 the God who, who, who had done all these miracles, Joshua, he died. And then you see the devotion that was to God and his generation dying out as well. See, we have to love God with all our heart and have no other gods before us. Do you hear me? Love God with all our hearts and have no other gods before us. This life is fleeting. One minute you're young, the next minute you're old. And it goes quicker than we can imagine. We spend our time chasing lots of pretty rainbows. But I wonder how much time we really spend in a place of prayer, in a place of knowing God, in a place of experiencing God to give to the next generation. It's not about a trend. It's about a relationship with God that will not change from one generation to the next. God help us to pass it on. And so the Joshua story, it didn't end the way that Moses' story did. Because when Moses died, then Joshua rose up. But there's no successor to move Israel forward. They're no longer one, but they're 12 tribes. And, and, and they're separated. They really need to have a leader. But it's not there. Can I tell you that when you look at Hebrews, if you'll turn with me to Hebrews chapter number 2. Hebrews chapter number 2, the Word of God says this in verse number 133. Therefore, we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we let them slip. Let we let them slip. And I'm just going to stop right there. If you go back to the original text, that word slip really can be uh, described by a nautical word a little bit better. And it lines up with the Greek. The word their slip, if we could replace it with the word, let them drift. 
let them drift. You see, slip means that you're holding on to something, but it slips out of your hand. Sometimes I find that my fingers feel like butter, you know what I mean? You pick something up and there it goes flying out. You know, you're trying to help. But the word drift means that you don't even realize that all of a sudden it has drifted away. And so the Word of God says that we should give the more earnest to the things to the things which we have heard. You know, there are things that, that, that we have been taught, and it's important to hold to those things and not let them slip away. The undercurrents come in very quickly and take things away. And before we know, that thing has drifted farther than what we can ever imagine. What are the things that we know that we should exalt the Christ of Calvary above everything else in our lives and that the cross should be the center of our lives, that Christianity, there is not a Christianity without a cross and there is no Pentecost without a cost. Amen. Uh, the, the, the things of this world is foreign to the things of God. We know that, that Jesus Christ, He is our Savior, our healer, our baptizer in the Spirit and our soon coming King. We know that this life is soon going to pass and only the things that's done for Christ will last. Uh, we know this, uh, that the most important thing to do is to live close to God and love the truth of God's Word. We're taught to let our light shine and to reach out, as, as Sister Peg said, to the lost and win them at any cost, to allow our faith to grow, to find our gifts and use them for the glory of God. Amen. To love the Lord thy God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. It's like being a love slave, going and having our ear bored at the post to say, I'm serving because I love. We know all these things. I've not taught you anything. I've told you anything you don't know. But what I'm saying this morning is how tight I'm holding to it. It's easy to allow things to slip away because we're not giving the more earnest heed to them. How well are you loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your might? That goes from the pulpit to the very last pew for all of us. Are we trusting and believing in God? Amen. Are we sacrificially worshiping God and giving Him our all? Because this is where the generations slip. Amen. It wasn't so between Moses and Joshua. But in Joshua's generation, there was no one to pass it on to because all of a sudden we find them worshiping the gods of all the other countries and all the other people. And they forgot about the Lord God Almighty who delivered them out of Egypt, took them to the Red Sea. Amen. The God who provided manna for them in the wilderness. The God who helped them conquer giants. The God who brought their walls down. The God who had called them out to be a distinct people. They forgot about that. Do you realize that God has called us to be a distinct people? Amen. Do you realize that God has called us to trust Him with all our heart? God has called us to treasure the things that we have of Him in this generation that we can pass them on to the next. Amen. We should be sharing the Word of God with our children. Amen. We should be evangelizing our community. We should be holding God more important than anything else in our life. It's interesting to me how that uh, we know what a riptide is. That 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 current that comes in, it, it really they say it only moves at about five mile an hour. Amen. But it comes into confined spaces, and, and before you know it, it can come in under and it can pull you out and take you out faster and quicker than you want to go and take your life. If we're not careful, the tides of this world can sweep us away from being in a solid position that Christ has for us. Think about this. The things that we do in moderation, and you all know what I'm going to say, the things that this generation does in moderation, the next generation will do in excess. So when you look at the mirror of what you're doing in moderation, you are now mirroring the heart of the next generation that is doing in excess. So we can see the heart of the next generation. But I believe that we can have a Joshua generation. A generation where, uh, where we show the power and the things of God and the work of God can go forth and continue. We live in a day and an hour where sometimes people can feel weary of doing well. Listen, I'm going to be flat out honest with this this morning. I know that oftentimes Christianity can sometimes be very difficult to live out in the world that we're in. 
And it's getting worse. There's less toleration for our convictions, for our standards, for our confidence in God. But can I tell you, it's not a time to compromise. It's a time to stand on the truth of God's word and say, I will not get weary and well doing. For I know I'm going to reap if I thank God. I'm telling you, we need a Joshua generation. A Joshua generation. In Isaiah, chapter number 30, verse number 19 and 20, the Bible says, For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. He shall reap no more. He will be very gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears it, he will answer you. And though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teachers will not be moved in the corner anymore. But your eyes shall see your teachers. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Whenever you, uh, whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left hand, I want you to know something. That I believe this, that each one of us here has a great cloud of witnesses. Some of us have spouses. It's all already gone on to the kingdom of God. Some of you have children. Some of you have parents and grandparents. And so each one of us has someone that says this to us, keep on running. Keep on trusting God. Keep on being faithful. Don't live by your feelings, but live by the voice of God's Word in your heart and in your mind. Do you believe this morning that we can put our feelings aside and we can trust the Word of God? Yes. Amen. You can say, but the facts right here, amen, this looks like the facts. But I want to tell you, but the truth of God's Word says this. So no matter what the world says the facts are, the truth of God's Word will always endure. The Word of God says that the grass withereth and the flower thereof fadeth away, but the Word of God endures forever. Amen. Don't trust your feelings. Let's be a generation that trusts the Word of God. This is very interesting to me. Do you know why the Titanic, and I'm, I'm closing, so probably ready for the fan. When the Titanic was being constructed, the grand staircase, expensive marble had already been laid. Listen to me this morning. Expensive marble had already been laid. However, the word came of a new invention that was available. And the flooring was twice expensive as marble. So the designers decided that they were going to rip out all the marble floor and they were going to put down this new floor that was the latest and the greatest. Would you like to hear what it is? It's called the linoleum. The linoleum, better than marble. Listen, only to a generation who is who values new and modern and the latest fad with something cheap like that be valuable. I'm telling you, there's got to be a generation who loves God and honors God. The cheap and the fad and the things that aren't valuable, we got to get rid of. We live in a world that's taught, oh, go live by your feelings, live by... Your feelings can lead you wrong. But it feels like, but it sounds like we have to go by the sound of what's true this morning. I don't know who you are or where you're at or what you've come to church with this morning, but I'm going to challenge you. Live by the word of God. Don't come. The voice of truth is always speaking. And if we start going down the roads of all kinds of fads and all kinds of gadgets, we get away from sacrificing and loving and trusting God and keeping God at the center. All those fads will lead us away from God. 
I realize one thing as a parent. The greatest thing is, is that my girls know Jesus. Trust me, I, I want to provide for them. I want to get them things. I want them to do well. I want them to have things I never had. I want them to go places I never had the opportunity to go. But not at the cost of their soul. I want them to know what prayer is about and honoring and respecting God and keeping the Word of God important even above your own feelings. So I'm reaching out to parents and grandparents. I'm reaching out to folks this morning in Miracle Revival Church that will be a generation of, 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 of Moses that will pass on. I don't want to be a Joshua generation where everything just falls apart. God help us to live by the truth. If you're here and you're struggling with something that you know is truth, but your feelings are so strong, this morning I just want to say, find a trusting place. A place where two lovers meet and there they can do and make promises to each other. Amen. The lover of your soul wants to spend time with you and make promises that you can survive and you can make it because He is for you. Amen. Would you gather around this morning? Leave your feelings aside and would you grab hold of the Word of God and allow Him to speak to you? Amen. Would you gather around? You know, anger, bitterness, jealousy, worldliness, carnality, it all has to be gone as we break through to the truth of God and sanctification that comes through Him. Would you gather into a place of prayer this morning? God, we want to be a Moses generation. We want to see you work in our lives. Amen. Let's touch in. My sister Holly sings this one. 